a wonderful experience. So I turn the time now over to you. Um, thank you so much, Audrey. I, I really appreciate it. I'm very excited about talking with you today about such an important topic. Give me a moment. I'm new to Google Meet, but I'm going to pull up my slides. So hang on one second. Okay, here we go. So, no, let's make sure they move. Okay. All right. Whoops, what happened to me? Okay. okay. I'm just okay. okay. So that was perfectly. Great job. Woohoo! <laughs> All right, my assistant who's sitting here is now excused. So. All right. Anyhow, it's really wonderful to be here with you today. I'm going to start by taking a look at what's called a wellness wheel. This is a circle that is divided into seven components, all of which impact our overall health and well being. Some of you may be familiar with this, but to others, this might be new. So let's start at the top and we'll go clockwise around the circle to look at the different factors that are involved in our health and wellness. We have emotional, goals and aspiration, physical, social, environmental, financial, and spiritual. All of them are important and they all play a role when you undergo a stem cell transplant. The two factors that we're going to emphasize in my talk today are the emotional and the physical. We have a limited amount of time, and I think those are most important for our, our topic today. Okay, now although my emphasis is going to be on the emotional, I'd like to start by, telling, by pointing out the reason that we need to emphasize the physical, at least in terms of myeloma and the stem cell transplant. As you know, myeloma is a serious blood cancer, and it, does, it is life-altering, and it can at times be life-threatening. Unfortunately, we do not yet have a cure, although we're moving in that direction. We're making progress, and there's a small group of patients who are considered to have what's called a functional, a functional cure, but that's not necessarily a long-term cure and still up in the air. But we are moving in that way, but the most important thing to realize, this is a very complicated blood cancer. It morphs over time, Unfortunately, sometimes people do relapse. And so we need to really put our focus in terms of being myeloma patients on our physical care. We need to be monitored carefully. Ideally, if you can, it's recommended that you have a myeloma specialist on your team or at least one that you can consult as needed. But you want to get the very best physical treatment that you can for your myeloma. Now, similarly, a stem cell transplant, as many of you know, is a complex medical procedure. It is considered by most myeloma specialists, although this is a bit controversial, but it's mostly considered to be the gold standard of care for patients who are eligible to have a transplant. There, there is some question now with the novel treatments that are now available, some myeloma specialists are beginning to wonder if it really is still the gold standard, if perhaps some of the new treatments might also become important as an alternative for patients. But one of the most important decisions you will make in terms of your treatment with myeloma will be whether or not to have a stem cell transplant. That is a huge decision. And of course you need to listen to the thoughts of the experts taking care of you. At the same time, as myeloma patients, we need to be incredibly well-informed. You need to gather information, you need to do your own research, and you need to ask questions. You need to ask, why would I have a transplant? What, what are the advantages of having it? What can I hope to accomplish? And of course, what are the risks? You also want to know what it would be like to go through a transplant and what the recovery phase is like. Still, nobody will tell you, they'll give you information, but they won't make the decision for you. So you and your loved ones will have to make the hard decision of whether you're going to have a transplant or not. But to do that, you wanna be well-informed. You wanna have as much knowledge as possible because knowledge is power. And I always believe in following the Girl Scout motto of being prepared. But once again, as you can see from the, the graphic on this slide, even though I really focus on emotional issues, the physical in terms of myeloma and a stem cell transplant is the most important factor. 
Um, however, that does not mean that we can or should ignore our emotional response to a transplant process. It is very important, as you saw in the wellness wheel, emotions play an important role in our overall outcome and overall health and well being. So, we do need to focus on the emotional issues along with the physical. Now, we're going to get more to the nitty gritty issues concerning your emotions. One of the reasons it's so important to, to deal with your emotions in a positive way is according to psychological research that's been done relatively recently, a stem cell transplant is considered a significant emotional stressor. And I want to go over those three words again because I think they are so important. It is a significant emotional stressor. In normal life, if you're not thinking about myeloma, in our normal life, we have other stressors, and some are more important and more significant than others. In fact, there's a hierarchy of stresses that matter to us and impact our lives emotionally. At the top of the list is the loss of a spouse. A loss of a loved one follows them. And then other things that are important are being diagnosed with a serious medical illness such as myeloma. Getting divorced is on the list, and getting married is also up there. Retiring is a very stressful event for many people, not for everybody, but for some people. And losing a job that you really love is also very difficult. And another one is moving to a new city or state where you don't have any support group. So those are normal stresses in, the, in everyday life. Now, I believe we also have a hierarchy of stresses in terms of our myeloma. We, being diagnosed with myeloma, as you remember, is an incredibly stressful time for both the patient and for the patient's significant others. Figuring out who you're going to see as the main person who's going to be treating you is stressful, and selecting your initial treatment is also very stressful. Um, relapsing is a major problem in myeloma. You think you're doing well, and then all of a sudden you get bad news, things are not going well. And then making a decision to undergo a transplant is a significant emotional stressor. So your emotions are extremely important. In addition to that, your physical responses and your emotional responses are both important and they are interrelated, intimately connected and interdependent. Those words are all kind of similar, but you basically they impact each other and they go hand in hand. You can never have a physical response and not have an emotional response. You can never respond emotionally and not have that impact how you feel physically. So both your emotions and your physical responses need to be recognized. They're both important and you cannot ignore them, especially through the transplant process. All right, now to get into a deeper discussion of what happens to you during the transplant process, I'm going to divide it into the three phases, pre-transplant, transplant, and post-transplant or discharge. If you have a moment before I go into more of the theory, if you could just jot down, and this is really just for your private information, although you're more than welcome to share it when we get into our open discussion. If you are a person who had a transplant, drop, jot down two or three of the main emotions you felt during the pre-transplant phase before you actually underwent the treatment? What are two or three of the feelings you felt during the actual transplant when you were having it done? And what were two or three of the feelings you had after the transplant was over and you were discharged? If you were the caregiver, it would be helpful if you do the same thing and not from the perspective of the patient, but instead from your own perspective as a significant other. And if you're a person who has not yet had a transplant and you haven't made a decision, think about yourself, how you handle stress, how you deal with myeloma, what do you think will be the two or three ways you'll respond emotionally pre-transplant? How do you think you might respond knowing yourself during the transplant phase? And what do you think it will be like emotionally when you are discharged? All right, it's just important that we focus on our emotions when we talk about transplant not just the physical aspect of the treatment. All right, now let's take a look. I'm going to move on to the pre-transplant phase. 
And I honestly think this picture captures it all. I, I don't know if you agree with me, but I actually do think it's perfect. The pre-transplant phase is known as a very hectic and stressful time. Even though you may have been planning to have a transplant for the past year or so, all of a sudden, within a few weeks of having the transplant, there are a whirlwind of activities that you need to deal with. There are last minute meetings with your myeloma specialist and with your transplant team. Many people have to go undergo last minute additional testing and procedures. And sometimes you don't know if your transplant is going to go forward until you get the results of some of that testing. So this is a very hectic time. There's a lot going on and you also have to make some very important decisions. The first of course is to make a final decision if you're going to undergo the transplant. If you are, you have to decide when you're going to have that done. And usually that would be fairly direct and simple to do. However, with the pandemic, I've been coaching patients this year whose transplants got put on hold, which was extremely, extremely anxiety provoking. They were already quite anxious and then they didn't know when it was going to move forward and they were on call. You have to make the decision about where you're going to have the transplant done. Are you going to have it done close to home? Or are you going to travel to a large cancer or transplant center? Are you going to do the transplant as an inpatient or an outpatient? Who's going to be your caregiver? Are they willing to be your caregiver? Will they be a good caregiver? And do they need a backup caregiver? You also, you, know, you have an important normal life. Who's going to take over the things that you do? Who's going to take care of children, el elderly relatives, pets, et cetera? You have to make all those arrangements before you go forward with your transplant. Equally important, you have to deal with employment issues if you're working. You'll need to probably take a leave of absence. And this becomes especially difficult if you are a person who has not shared that you have myeloma with your coworkers. You also have to make sure everything's in order in terms of your health insurance issues. Make sure you understand the coverage and what it will involve. So this is a very hectic time. And you have a ton to deal with in a very short time. Now, there are a variety of emotions that you may experience if you're going to undergo the transplant. There is no one or two feelings that is the one that you have to have or are expected to have. It varies depending on you and your personality. And it can change from moment to moment and day to day. But usually in the pre-transplant phase, you will feel anxiety. Another term, and I don't know if you're familiar with it, but I'm sure you've seen it more frequently, is the word distress. This is different than anxiety. Distress only involves your response to having cancer. So when you talk about distress, it's related to all the feelings you have related to your myeloma. And this is a very important reaction because according to recent studies, myeloma patients and blood cancer patients seem to have much higher levels of distress than other types of cancer patients. At times, we have very severe distress. So it's something we really need to consider. Some of the reasons for that is because we don't have a cure to our illness. Many times the treatment is intense, and many times it lasts for a long period of time, always with the worry and concern about a relapse. So distress, I would certainly take into consideration. You may have fear. You may experience hopelessness and despair, which are related to depression. Some people get very angry. They get angry that they have myeloma. They get angry that their doctors are recommending a stem cell transplant and they agreed to have it. And their anger just gets a little bit out of control and begins to cause them some difficulties. You may feel your whole life is out of control now. Nothing you want to do, and you're not going to be able to do any things you want to do. You have to put a lot of things on hold until you get through the transplant process. You may experience a sense of disequilibrium and you most likely will feel overwhelmed. Now it's important as you deal with whatever feelings, remember there's no, not a right or wrong way to feel. You may feel one of those emotions. You might not have any of those. You might have other emotions or you might have a combination, but you want to try to deal with it in a positive way and avoid using what's called negative coping mechanisms. Unfortunately, these negative coping mechanisms are the ones we're most comfortable with and they're the ones that are easiest to use. 
So you want to not use them. I'm using a lot of negative terms together. You, want, you don't want to deny your feelings. You do not want to put your feelings on a back burner. You don't want to ignore them. And you definitely don't want to hold your feelings inside. That's very risky. As you hold your real feelings inside, they begin to pile up on top of each other. They don't get dealt with. And at some point, they might explode in some way. So we want to avoid these responses, even though we were, I like to, to lean on them a little bit. Instead, we want to do positive coping techniques, but these are challenging, especially challenging during the hectic and stressful time of the pre-transplant phase. Now I'm going to ask you in the middle of this hectic time when you have so much to take care of and you're so stressed to take a moment and relax, which sounds impossible, and reflect on what you're really feeling. In order to do this, you need to remove yourself from the chaos. And that's not always easy because many of us live in somewhat chaotic situations. But you want to go into either a private, quiet room, you might wanna to listen to music, whatever works for you. You might wanna go for a walk or do some other type of physical activity that you find relaxing, that you can think about your feelings. You might want to go out, you might want to sit in the park, you might want to go to your backyard, but pick your special place. If you can, remove yourself from everything that's going on for just a short time, and then think about what are you really feeling about undergoing this transplant. It is so important that you recognize your feelings and know what you're deeply feeling. And then it's also helpful, if you're able to, to share your emotions with someone you trust. That could be your coach, your significant other, it can be your myeloma coach, it can be a support group, it can be anybody that you're comfortable sharing feelings with. But that will be extremely helpful to you. And by doing that, you'll be better able to move forward with your transplant. But let's now move to the actual transplant phase. This is a time when you can expect to have ups and downs, both emotionally and physically. It's very typical, some moments things are good and some moments things are bad or not so good. Um, your emotional reaction and the way you deal with your ups and downs will depend on several factors. Your overall mental health is very important. If you're an emotionally stable person, you will tend to be able to deal with the ups and downs better than if you're a person who's had mental health problems and a little bit more fragile. Your inner strength is important your support system is also incredibly important. If you have a good and loving support system, that is incredibly helpful. It is very difficult to go through a transplant if you don't have a support system. I really am troubled about people who go through, you have a transplant, but they're doing it alone. And they do have to depend and they will get help from their medical and their transplant team. But that is much more stressful and more difficult than if you have it can be a very tiny support system. It could be just one person, but that's all you need to help you get through a difficult time. And the other thing that will play a role in how you'll do, how your, your, your emotional reactions will go will be your medical response to your transplant. If you're doing well with your transplant, you'll first of all know it from the nonverbal communications of your transplant team. When they come in the room to talk to you, you'll immediately see, are they relaxed? Do they seem warm and outgoing? Do they smile? And you'll begin to get a sense before they even tell you that things are going well. This news, of course, makes you feel much better emotionally. But the opposite also can happen. You need to expect it can happen at times during a transplant. You might find that your transplant team doesn't look so relaxed or encouraging. They are not smiling. Their voice is more serious. You'll begin to pick up the cues that there are some problems. And most importantly, they hopefully will give you information about what's going on medically and if you're having any complications. If you do get these news, it's very typical to respond with the symptoms that I have on this list. And I'll just read some of them that are most important. You will become upset and anxious. You might become fearful, angry if your personality leans in that direction helpless, hopeless, and depressed, discouraged. You might feel totally out of control. Here you decide to have this transplant. You can't, you're getting not good news and there's nothing you can do to make it, to improve the news that you're getting. You'll feel very helpless. 
you might feel full of regret that you ever made the decision to have the transplant. And that's a really uncomfortable feeling. You might be angry at yourself and feel you were misled or whatever, but you might have moments of a lot of, of regret. Additionally, you might feel fragile emotionally. And even though you have your caregiver, you have your team taking care of you, you might feel very lonely and isolated in this difficult situation. But clearly, the news about your physical condition impacts you emotionally, and it also goes the other way. Your emotional response will impact your physical response and your physical condition. So both need to have attention. All right, in this difficult situation, if you're receiving news that's not encouraging, you have to do your very best to hang in there and find that inner strength that you have. It might be deep down, but you need to search for it. Because you need to recognize, and you knew ahead of time, that a transplant can have ups and downs. And now you might just be in a down phase. Remind yourself this couldn't hopefully be temporary, and it will improve. But you need to feel whatever you're feeling. You can't change your feelings. You need to be honest about with yourself about what you're feeling, and you may need to share those feelings with someone else. Try to stay as positive, positive and, help, and hopeful as possible. But this is hard when things aren't going well. Remind yourself of the reasons you elected to have the transplant. Remind yourself of all the research you did and the information the specialist told you and why they wanted you to have this. And try to you know, stay in there and be positive and hope that you'll be able to respond better. If things are difficult, especially difficult, then communicate your distress, that cancer-related feeling, to your caregiver, to your loved ones, to your friend, to your myeloma coach or coaches, and to your support groups. By reaching out to others and getting some support from them, it will make dealing with difficult times a little easier. If your feelings are getting more intense and you feel you're very concerned about how you're doing emotionally, that would be the time for you to advocate for yourself and ask to have some professional help, even during the actual transplant process. Getting emotional help can be very important. It's nothing to be embarrassed about or ashamed of. It's an important part of cancer care. We'll take a minute to pause, and now we'll move on to the post-transplant phase. I'm not, I have two slides on this. I'm not going to follow the order because I think I would rather start with the positive things that happen in the post transplant phase and then talk about the things that are, are of concern. I think all along you expect the post transplant or your discharge to be wonderful. It is, and many times it's a time of celebration. It's a time you feel you're reborn. It's the time that you feel your myeloma is going to be under much better control and things are going to go better. There's a lot of excitement and a lot of joy. And that's wonderful. The underlying problem is there's also some underlying feelings that might not be so positive. Up until now, you have been monitored extremely carefully. You have been the focus of attention physically. And all of a sudden, you're going to be discharged and more on your own. You're going to have to begin to trans transition back to being an independent, more functioning person, and gradually you'll have more res normal responsibilities added to your life. Even though you want this to happen, it's a very difficult process at times. The other part is you can be very anxious about, can you handle your post-discharge treatment? It might be confusing to you. It might be somewhat worrisome. What are the side effects and what are the things that you need to watch for? If you begin to have problems, who do you call during the daytime and who do you call at night? Who is going to be there? Who's going to be available to help you in case of emergency? And one of the greatest things that impacts people emotionally during discharge is a sense of uncertainty. You got through the transplant, you survived, you did it, which is all wonderful, but you don't know the results yet. You don't know how successful the transplant is. And I think that's a very difficult waiting period to begin to get tested and see what your results really are. So this can be, in addition to being in a wonderful and exciting time, and you can feel tremendous relief that it's over, it's a time that has its own stress and distress. 
you may need, if the stress gets to be too much and the distress is too much for you, once again, you need to seek some additional emotional support. Um, during the post-transplant phase, it's normal once again to experience a wide variety of emotions. And these, you know, once again, it's a list of symptoms and responses. Some of them might be ones you'll experience and some might not be, and you might experience several of them or none of them, and they may keep changing. But you, of course, will have on your mind what are your overall results. You may have worry and uneasiness, a sense of anxiety and distress. There's often an uncertainty about your future and your life with myeloma. Some people during this time grieve and mourn for their previous life, even pre-myeloma. You may have an acute sense of the loss of the person you used to be, which is always a difficult feeling. You want your identity and you have to adjust to your new identity. On the positive, try to maintain your hope and optimism for the future, celebrate your resilience and enjoy feeling a sense of gratitude for all the people who helped you get through this difficult treatment process. These are all normal feelings, but there are times that people have more difficulty dealing with the transplant. And this is a list of clues that somebody's struggling following a transplant. The ones that I listed in red are the ones that I think are the biggest danger signs or warning signs that somebody's struggling. But a person following a transplant might begin to feel increased depression a sense of hopelessness. They may have a lack of motivation. They just aren't motivated to do anything. Additionally, one of the biggest clues that a person is struggling if they have an inability to complete tasks of daily life. Those are things such as eating, concentrating, personal hygiene, um, sleeping, just doing things that are basically things that we usually do in our everyday living. All of a sudden, they can't do the simplest of tasks. They may have significant sleep difficulties, an inability to control their thoughts and emotion. And the next one I actually find kind of fascinating and also very concerning. They may demonstrate non-compliance with their care. When they're discharged, they're given a list of medications to take, things that they should eat, how they should build themselves back up. They're going to they discuss getting re-immunized. There's lots of things they need to do. And yet here this person is who went through this complete process, the pre-transplant phase, the transplant, and now they're discharged, and they don't follow any of the directions or guidelines. It makes no sense from an intellectual basis. And to me, it's a sign that that person is struggling emotionally. They may also withdraw from others. They may begin to have overwhelming negative thoughts. And the most serious response that can happen, and hopefully does not happen often, is thoughts of self-harm. But you always need to be concerned that that could happen. If you're the significant other, you need to monitor the person carefully. If they begin to have those kinds of thoughts, they need immediate emo emotional assistance from a professional. You need to refer them very quickly. So I, I hope that this is just a broad overview. It's a lot of generalization, but a stem cell transplant is a significant emotional stressor. And you do have to deal with both the initial, your physical responses and your emotional responses because they impact each other and they go hand in hand. You can't neglect them and you have to you want to try to deal with them in a very positive way. The last word of wisdom I would like to add to this discussion is through the transplant process, I hope that you will value your uniqueness. You are unique as an individual, your myeloma is unique, and you will deal with your transplant in your own unique way. You, you know, so if it doesn't fit the scheme I presented, that is okay. What, whatever you feel is what you feel. But the most important part is recognize your feelings. And if you're struggling, advocate for yourself, share your need for a little additional support, and never be embarrassed about needing extra help. It can be tremendously important and have a huge impact on how you do with the wellness wheel. All right, I'd like to, so that's the overview of the emotional response to myeloma and the stem cell transplant, looking briefly at each of the phases. To be honest, there's not a ton of literature about 
the emotions in a transplant. And I actually spent some time going through different cancer centers, booklets they give patients about a transplant. I personally did not find inf much information about your emotions, maybe a little bit. And I might be wrong. I didn't look at every cancer center in the United States, but the ones I did review, everything seemed to be about the physical needs and not your emotional needs, yet your emotions are so important. So I'd like to open this up for discussion, your comments, your experiences. If you wrote any emotional reactions down that you'd like to share with each other, that would be great. And I'm gonna let Audrey facilitate this um, I'm not wonderful on Google Meet, so if you're talking to me and you're on my right and I'm looking to my left, I apologize, but I will, I will do my best. Great job, Louise. Thank you so much. And you can tell how much time you put into preparing this. It was very well organized, and I really loved the different aspects that you put into this. So thank you. Thanks. Um, if you want to stop sharing your screen so 